Hello, in this tutorial we are going to have a look at doing equations in our markdown. And what we're going to do is to create uh, the equation on the right hand side of the screen because uh, that has lots of things in it um, that you are quite likely to use uh, when writing an equation. So first of all, in your markdown file, if you want to write an equation, we need to create a, a kind of equation space. And we do this by doing two dollar signs, return, and two dollar signs. Now, anything within those two, or any lines of uh, text between those two dollar signs are gonna be processed as an equation. And the syntax it, we use to write equations is uh, based on the LaTeX uh, language. Is that the right word? I'm not sure. Anyway, it's based on LaTeX. So if you're stuck on how to do an equation or some feature of an equation in our markdown, if you Google anything to do with LaTeX equations, uh, you will uh, hopefully find a solution. So anyway, let's have a look at this equation. So first of all, if we write any kind of text, uh, so we want our outcome variable to be called resemblance. So let's write that in. Uh, now in your R markdown um, document, uh, you'll get a preview of what the equation's going to look like. Now you can see that by default, any text that you put into an equation is rendered in italics. It's assumed that you're gonna want it kind of in maths type, so in italic font. If we want it in regular uh, font, what we have to do is tell um, our markdown to format it as text. And as you'll see over the course of this tutorial, a lot of things in LaTeX uh, involve a slash like that and then some kind of instruction so we're gonna write slash text and then we want to enclose whatever text we want formatted as text we enclose in curly brackets so if we put resemblance in curly brackets it gets formatted as uh, plain text so uh, that's the first bit now we've got some subscripts so we've got an i and a j so we can do subscripts by doing an underscore. So if we do underscore i, for example, we get a nice subscript of i. Now what happens, we want to add a j to this. What happens if we just add a j? Well, the j doesn't get formatted as a subscript. It goes back to regular size font. And again, we can use the curly brackets here. So the curly brackets are used to kind of contain uh, things together. So if we put the i and the j in curly brackets, then both of them then uh, get formatted as subscript. So the subscript gets applied to everything in the curly brackets. Okay, equal sign, we just type as an equal sign. Um, same with plus and a minus. If you wanna do a times at any point, then you wanna do slash times. That will give you a multiplication symbol. We don't in this case, but that's uh, handy to know. So now we've got some symbols. We've got some Greek letters. We've used some gammas here. Now, Greek letters in LaTeX uh, are generally a slash, again, <laughs> again uh, and then the name of the letter that you want. So if we write slash beta, we'll get a beta. If you write slash alpha, you'll get an alpha. Uh, if you want an eta, you'll get an eta. So um, mathematical symbols, Greek letters, it's just slash and then the name of the symbol that you want. If you go on forever here, sigma. Uh, if you want a capital sigma, just change the S to a capital S, uh, so on and so forth. So we want a gamma symbol. So let's type slash gamma. That gives us our gamma symbol. Now again, um, we have some subscripts here. We've got a zero and a J, so we can apply them, the subscript symbol. And again, because we've got two of them, we're going to put them in curly brackets. So we're going to collect them together, zero, J and that gives us our subscripts. Now the gamma also has a hat on it. So how do we get a hat? Well, again, we can apply some formatting uh, using uh, uh, something beginning with a slash. It's actually slash hat. So slash hat, we'll put a hat over whatever we enclose within the curly brackets after slash hat. 
So, <laughs> uh, we want the gamma, okay? We don't want the subscripts, we only want the gamma uh, to have a hat on. So we do slash hat, curly bracket. At the moment, this is this makes no sense, so it's being rendered as kind of gobbledygook. And we want to put our closing curly bracket at the end of the gamma, so we don't want to include the subscripts. And that gives us our hat over the gamma. So we now basically know everything that we need to complete the first line. So we can put a plus symbol in just by typing plus on the keyboard. Uh, we want another gamma with a hat on, so we can do slash hat, curly brackets, slash gamma. That gives us a gamma with a hat on. Then we go out of the curly bracket to do our subscript of one. We don't need curly brackets here because we've only got one uh, uh, character in the subscript. Then we want the word intervention and we want that formatted as text. So we do slash text intervention. Go outside of the curly brackets and we've got subscripts of I and J. So we do the underscore to get the subscripts and we've got two of them. So we put them in curly brackets, I, J. Then we want a plus symbol, that's just plus on the keyboard. And then we've got an E. And again, we've got some subscripts, two subscripts, I, J. Great, so that's our first line done. Now what about the second line? Well, you might think, just hit return and off we go again. So on our second line, we've got, we want a hat again. So we've got slash hat, curly brackets. And then within the slash hat, we uh, want, <laughs> what do we want? Oh, we want a gamma. That's right. We want another gamma. But look, it's not put the gamma on a new line. It's put the gamma right next to the E. So hitting return hasn't achieved giving us a new line. So what we actually need to do is at the end of our first line is do a double slash. And then that creates a new line. So a double slash is like a LaTeX thing for uh, a new line. So now our gamma is on the uh, line below like we want it. We've got two subscripts, zero J. So we put them in curly brackets. We've got another equal sign. And this, we're just using stuff that we've used before now. So we've got another gamma with a hat on. So we do slash hat and then within the curly brackets slash gamma. That's got a subscript to zero. So we do underscore zero, then plus off the keyboard. Uh, now we've got a U with a hat on it. So we do slash hat in the curly brackets, the letter U, and then underscore zero and J. So great. Oh, <laughs> it would help if I put them in the curly brackets, zero J. Great, we've got our equation. Except the equation on the right, the equal signs are aligned with each other, which, you know, looks pretty, right? But in the one that we've done, uh, they're not aligned. So how do we get our equal signs to align? Well, to do that, we have to add an extra bit of latex. So before, before any of our equation, we want to do slash begin curly brackets and the word aligned. And then after our last line, but bearing in mind, this is this is all within those double dollar signs. We want to do slash end and then aligned. And what we're doing here is we're creating an environment. So when we say begin aligned, we're beginning uh, an, an, a sort of alignment environment. I don't know what it's properly called. Um, and then when we do slash end aligned, we're ending that alignment environment. So the equation is now contained within an environment where we can align things. So how do we align the equal signs? Well, we use uh, an ampersand to tell our markdown the, the place that we want the alignment at. So we want it at the equal sign. So at, the, at this first equal sign, I'm gonna put an ampersand. So that's saying, I want the alignment to be there on the first line. And then on the second line, we also add ampersand before the equals and that's saying we want that's the point at which we want the alignment to be on the second line so by putting the ampersand before the equal sign on both of the lines we get an alignment at the equal sign okay that's a, a brief uh, little journey into latex equations in markdown
Bye.